Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. This is Asim here. Hope you liked the previous two videos. The first one being about the realistic mission first, and the second one about the project discovery tool nuclei. Hope that would have helped you a lot. So today we are going to start with the second mission of realistic one. So this is about some basic SQL injection, and then in the later half of the video we would see some of the uh, reports based on that. So those are not very basic SQL injection, but I would try to explain that as well. So if you haven't still subscribed to our channel, do that and also press the bell icon so that you don't miss any videos from myself. So let's get started with this. So I've already logged into the site. So this is the website, Chicago American Nazi Party. So there's a simple message that there is a Organizing anti-immigrant rally in Chicago. Help anti-racist activists take over the website. Take this chance. There's also a forum link. So if you want to discuss something, you could go to their forum and do that. So this is the uh, website page. So from destroy face puzzle message. I have been informed that you have quite admirable hacking skills. I hope they like our skills. So what we have to do is we have to become the admin of that page so that we could push some of the messages so that like hack that could prove that we have hacked the website. Let's check this page. So if you see this, open this image into the another page, you could see that there is support channel and there is support page, but there is nothing. So let's check the source code of this. Join the no no no. This is something update is somewhere here. Color is hash zero zero is basically in hex format is zero. So there's update here. Okay, you could see that it was hidden because it was in the black color itself. So you couldn't find this. And looking at the web like link, I found that okay, there is something hidden here. So if I select this and co open this in another page, so we get that this is where we have to enter the username password. White brother. So username like admin password is password. I hope it won't work. Yeah, right. So this is like a basic SQL injection. So I am gonna go through this page. It has quite a good tutorial about this, and I would try to explain how the particular SQL payload would fix into that. That would help us bypass that particular check. So it says that you could have like a potential login page like this and you could have a potential SQL injection here. So it's about it the like this tutorial based on OWASP multi-day 2. So it's a like it's like the juice shop. So it's basically a vulnerable web application where you could practice your skills. So it has a lot of vulnerabilities like uh, IDORs and um, SQL injections or LFI, RFI and all those things. So you could test all those in a safe environment like like the one we are using here. So you could have this particular application on your uh, like local setup and you could do that. So here the person says that this is the payload that would bypass the SQL check and the backend. What it would do is so like modify the SQL query into the name input. So so name input will like uh, single quote space or one equal to one then hyphen hyphen. So hyphen hyphen is basically like commenting out whatever is in front of that. So the backend query that would be like searching for the username and correct password could be something like select star from users where username equal to and whatever you enter on the login page and password equal to whatever password you have entered. So based on that, they would check into the query, right? So but what you have done essentially by adding this payload here is that you have like completed username equal to single code single code so username is blank or one equal to one and then comment out anything after that so basically this and part is comment out so and since or one equal to one is always true so username blank or true so essentially it converts to true so select star from users where you where it's true so it would be any of the rows that matches would come out on the main page so it would basically bypass the login page and that's what has happened and logged in as admin. 
So we would just paste this here in username as well as in the password field because it could be that in the username they might be checking something or they might not be using it. But even if that's there, we could like bypass it using adding it into the password field. You could see that go on. So basically, you solve that mission. So it was quite easy. Uh, I think it was quite easy because I have already studied about this. So yeah, that's pretty much all about SQL bypassing. Then there here's a cheat sheet. So these are some of the strings that people usually use in like bypassing SQL checks and like some of the default things that you do when you have. You are quite a seasoned one, so you by default try to use this. So in one of the government websites, I found like SQL injection bypass based on just this, and I reported it to the NCIAPC and the uh, Cert India, and they took oh, they acknowledged that and they like fix that. So it was a very old portal. So these are some of the payloads that you could try. So now let's come to the reports part. It's the more interesting part, I would say. So these are some of the reports that I have sorted out, so that these are easy to understand as well as quite interesting ones. Like in the second report, you would see how the hacker used user agent to bypass that. So this is the first report where Space Raccoon uh, submitted a bug to Starbucks, for which they were offered four thousand dollars. So what it had essentially was there was a XML formatted HTTP payload where you could add a like SQL uh, payload. So initially he tried and he found that there was a upload form where he could like he tried to do XXE attacks because that's the first thing that comes to your mind when you try uh, when you find that the form could accept XML payload. So you try for XXE, and he also tried it. He achieved a billion laughs attack. So I could make another video on this if you want. I would uh, add a link for this billion last attack in the description. So do check that out as well. So that resulted in denial of service. But since that wasn't good enough, so he tried a few more days, and then eventually moved on to some other targets. So he mentioned that a month later he revisited the target, and he found that in the like in one of the parameters, he thought that there could be SQL query in the backend because there was a number parameter and. The query could be select star from accounts where main account equal to like one two three four five six. So he thought of adding a single quote because that like that essentially breaks a lot of SQL backend if you are directly using the input from a user. So I've also mentioned it in my like the first or second video that never accept like never trust user input, right? So I tried that, and he also tried. Like he that didn't work single code, so he converted it into into uh, HTML entity, the ampersand pos. So uh, sorry, not HTML entity, but in URL encoding format. The server immediately returned a database error. So that's enough to like be sure that there's a SQL uh, SQL injection possible, because your single code is being interpreted as the database string, as we saw in that one. So, if I use SQL map, even I also try to use SQL map if if it's not very trivial one because SQL map is a great tool. Like it does a lot of complex testing that you might uh, you you most probably would skip when you're doing manually. So it does all that automatically. So he also added tamper HTML in code because this single code and that converting that being converted into ampersand p APOS. So that's basically HTML encoded entity. So that's why I use the tamper like HTML encode tamper plugin with SQL map. He found that the database was Microsoft SQL Server 2012. In the end, he mentioned the takeaway is that like if you don't have a tunnel vision. So by tunnel vision, he means that if you find that there's a uh, endpoint that helps you upload XML entities or XML formatted file. So don't only look for XXE. Try for other bugs as well. Like you could also try for IDOR because it had like main activity was a numerical numeric ID. So you could also try for IDOR there. I think he might have tried also. Uh, take notes and revisit old targets. It has helped me also as well. Like I always try to maintain a log of which targets I had already looked. 
and as i talked about the subdomain discovery one in the amas video that it helps you keep track of the subdomains that you have already found and helps you get a diff of like the previous results and the new ones so that basically you don't like go over again doing the same recon thing on those previous startups so just a glimpse of that one and third one assess impact after initial exploit but don't go too far so like if you would if he would have just reported the billion laughs and denial of service he won't have like i got a 4000 dollar bug bounty right but since he could like do sk injection and i think he he would he was able to dump the database like get a few data out of it so i think that's why they have uh, awarded him a large bounty than that and it's critical i guess uh, yeah it's critical that so let's come to the second one so this is quite an interesting one because here the researcher did a sql injection in the user agent parameters because most of us just use the like post parameters or some other modifications right we don't check the user agent string for that he did that and he tried a sleep 5 into 5 command and he found that the server took 25 seconds to respond so basically this is a like a sql command and so basically he found that okay sql injection could be done you could directly input some commands and the backend would execute that for this he was awarded 2000 dollar so he, just to verify that it was a valid thing and not a flu so he tried with other values like zero and other random values and he found that that particular expression was being like evaluated and being executed in the backend so that's about this and third one is about uh, sk injection that this researcher found in us department of defense website so it was straight forward in the like get url parameter so doc id was one and then he added some like space and select queries and select from and then he added again the sleep one so as to check whether the server was, was directly vulnerable to the sql like commands so since the uh, server was taking sleep when he added sleep zero the server response was delayed by 0 seconds when he added one server response was delayed by 5 seconds sleep to 10 seconds and so on so he just submitted that and since it's a vdrp so no bounty was awarded but yeah it was a high severity bug so for that he would have got a like reputation points would be higher from that so that's pretty much for today hope you like the video uh, i'm working on the like improving my speaking part i would say trying to slow down my pace and like working on improving the video quality as such make sure you subscribe to the channel like the video share this with your friends and yeah don't forget to press the bell icon so i'll try to make another video tomorrow or maybe a day after that meanwhile you could check out our subreddit hacking simplified we have around 250 300 members i guess and i try to post articles daily uh, some days i could miss but you could like you could fill in for me there you could also post articles some of your queries i try to answer them other people could also answer them so hope you like the video thank you have a nice day